Hello. Yes, I'm not at home. I am on the road at the moment. I'm doing some recording though still. Um, so I've, I've got my portable setup with me. Um, and I wanted to walk you through a couple of things that I have recently discovered. So um, I'm playing around with Amazon Bedrock as I do um, quite often. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set up a knowledge base. Now I know setting up a knowledge base is almost one of the easiest things you can do, but I'm trying to do this in code. Um, for a bunch of reasons, this is really useful for me. Um, and of course, if you're gonna deploy this um, through a pipeline or something, then you need to do it through code, right? So uh, turns out, there's a few steps that you've got to go through to get this set up and I'm learning what to do. I'm not an open search expert. So if that's what you want from this video, then stop watching now. Um, let me show you, let me show you um, some bits and pieces. So um, uh, yes, I can do picture in picture even though I'm on the road. <laughs> now, um, so this is, this is knowledge bases. This is inside the Amazon Bedrock console page. I have one knowledge base already in here, but if you wanted to set up a new one, and for those who aren't aware, knowledge bases is essentially a fully, man fully managed uh, retrieval augmented generation. Um, I can click on, let me get rid of me now because I need to show you the button. Uh, I can click on create knowledge base um, and then I pop through all of these different things. So you can set up a name and a description. I'm not going to do this. I'm just gonna look at the menu. Um, set up some IM, IM permissions. Um, so select one of the data sources. And so there's a bunch of new data sources in there re recently added. You can also go and grab documents from S3. Fine, I'll leave it at that. Set up some tags. Um, stuff. Let's go next. Um, and then I, here, because I selected S3, I can now so, uh, do the details of that. So I can point out all the different things in there that I want to set up and where oh, I need to select an S3 bucket. Um, let's select. Ooh, uh, yeah, okay. This is actually exactly the same one as I have for the other one. And again, I'm not going to make this, so it doesn't matter. Um, once you've selected the S3 bucket, you can now set up your embeddings. So I'm just going to check, select literally the first one. Um, and choose your vector dimension. Then we get to this part here. And this part here is where you select your vector database. Now, if you leave this um, selected, quick create new vector store, then um, the console essentially will set you up with an Amazon OpenSearch serverless vector store. Um, so a single AZ, um, not uh, non-redundant, but just there just to get you started. Um, Amazon Open Search Serverless Vector Store. If I say I want to choose one I've already got, then you can see the different vector store options that are available. Now, oh, now, now, now. Here's the thing. Um, these vector stores are all cloud-based somewhere, so you can't set up an Open Search cluster somewhere. Um, say, for example, in a container somewhere else, or on your own machine, or anything like that. They've got to be somewhere. Um, well, they've got to be one of these managed services, so that the service can go and connect to it. So that's fine. Um, and yeah, it has open search serverless selected here by default. So what I wanna do is I want to have this selected and you'll, you'll notice, or, or I want to do this programmatically. And you notice when you do this, there's a bunch of things that you start to need to add in. So the collection ARN, it's a collection, not a cluster. I'm learning about open search. Um, so a collection ARN, a, a vector index name, so you need to have an index in there. Um, you need to have some um, field mappings in there, some metadata field mapping, and oh my goodness, there's a bunch of stuff that needs to exist before you can do this. And so I've been learning about how this works. So let me cancel out of this. Um, here I have an existing knowledge base. Um, so this knowledge base, uh, if I look at this, sorry, no, uh, yes, I have an exist, existing knowledge base. So I have an existing knowledge base. This backs onto an open search cluster. So let's go and have a look at that. I have the console already open here because I knew what I was gonna say. Um, and here I can go to the collections, the, so the serverless collections, and here is the open search serverless collection for that knowledge base. Now this one was made by the console. And so with this, we can start to have a look at all the different parts of it that exist that we would have to, and I will have to replicate inside of my script. So if I go into the collection, then there's a bunch of stuff here. So um, these are the things I wanna point out, the network policy, the encryption uh, policy, and the data access policy, three things that need to be made. Now these all do have AWS APIs for them. So if you're doing this via CloudFormation, or as I will probably be doing it with Sam, then you can you you have um, 
native things inside of CloudFormation to make these things, but you need to know that you have to make them because you can create the collection without these things and then you just can't do anything with it. So in the network, it's essentially this network policy. I can open this up and have a look at it. Um, and I, I prefer to edit it and have a look at JSON. Um, so it looks like this. Can you see that? I'll zoom in a bit. Um, so uh, nothing much in there, but it does need to exist. And basically this gives the network access um, definitions, something to the collection itself down the bottom, but also the dashboard, because there's a dashboard to your open search collection that you can get into, which is outside of the AWS console thing I've learned. Um, so let's zoom out of that and let's go back to my knowledge base and go back and go, oops, I need to go back again. Actually, let's just go back and open up the collection. Um, so the next thing down is the encryption policy. That's very basic, but it does need to exist. And it basically, this is just saying that there is a KMS key um, and you can obviously, you could define your own, but I'm happy with the um, AWS managed KMS key to encrypt my data at rest inside of the collection. Four, fine, cool. And then data access policy. So if I click on this, um, then, well, a couple of interesting things here. Now, um, these have been obfuscated by plugins because I don't know. I know that account numbers aren't really a security thing, but anyway, I didn't want to share them. So this has got two different principles in here. So this looks a lot like a an IAM policy, but it's got two different principles in here that can connect to the open search collection. One of them is the role that uh, we have for the knowledge base. So we need to give the knowledge base access to the open search collection, makes sense. The other one is me and my account or an account that I often come in and use um, or a role that I'm gonna use um, so that I can get access to the dashboard so that I can go and have a look at the collection itself. Okay, so um, th so there's a bunch of things that you need, right? You need um, uh, to the, the network policy, the encryption policy, and the data access policy, so those things. But it doesn't stop there. We also need to create an index on the actual collection itself in order that you can put the vectors in. So if we go and actually open up the dashboard, and there's a link here on the console to open up my dashboard. now that link requires that I have permissions to access it. So it's a public link, yes, but um, I have the permissions to log in. And then I get into this, which is the open search, uh, open search dashboard. Um, and again, I'm not an expert at this, but I know enough to be able to find what I wanna look at. So if I click on DevTools at the top here, um, then, well, it's already in here. By default, you'll have a different um, search thing in here or a different query, um, but this is the query language clearly for open search and I can ask it to show me stuff. This is the only one that I know off the top of my head. Get underscore all um, helps us to be able to have a look at what's going on. If I run that, then it comes up on the other side of the screen and I'll have to get rid of my head again so you can see it properly. Although I can move this over, can't I? Yeah. Um, and this starts to show the other stuff you need. Now again, this open search collection has been created by the Bedrock Console page, essentially, for the, for the um, knowledge base service, when you clicked those buttons. If I had continued with that flow before, it would have done all of these things that we've been looking at, all three of those policies, and also this index setup. So I use this as a reference. I, need, I know that I need to set this up, but there's no um, native way to do that, as far as I'm aware, and if there is, let me know, but there's no native way to do that inside of CloudFormation, for example, um, because this is something that needs to connect to a running collection in order to do this. So how do we do this? Yes, well, we're going to use a custom resource inside of our CloudFormation template. And the custom resource essentially is a Lambda function. So I can show you um, the Lambda function I'm working on. Uh, let me bring it over to the screen. There we go. Uh, and make it a bit bigger. Um, so uh, if you're not familiar, then a custom resource is a Lambda function that you can provide to the CloudFormation template and say, um, you know, once you've finished building these resources, you can now go and build this resource. And this resource happens to be a, a Lambda function that you've defined. So you can basically get it to do anything you want. And in this particular case, I'm going to get it to connect to the open search collection and then 
apply the configuration that I need. So if you look at this, um, Lambda Handler basically is where this will start. And it basically, th this follows a bit of a sort of a templated um, setup for a custom resource. So it needs to be able to respond to the events that CloudFormation um, will send it. So to create something, to update something, to delete something, which is what we can see right here. Create, update, and delete. Um, but if we scroll down, this is where it gets a bit more interesting from the perspective of open search in particular. And um, so this will set up a um, an open uh, the client. So if you look at the top here, we're using open search Python library um, with a bunch of different things, open search and all of the authorization bits and pieces that you need. Um, and so what this does is it creates an open search client object, which we can then use to configure our open search collection. And so it does things in here. It's actually using the AWS session to get credentials um, that it can then use to access the collection. Because if you remember before with the network access policy, we had a couple of different pr um, principles that could get access. I, um, and, um, oh, that's right. So what was, I would, I was, mm, so it needs, it needs access. So it needs access. So um, essentially if this has administrative access or it has some kind of policy, which is going to give it access into the, into the endpoint, then it will work. Um, what is this Lambda function going to be running as? I suppose it's going to be, if it's running on my account, it's going to be running as me, isn't it? So it's going to have access. This is something I need to look into a bit more. Um, anyway, that sets up the the uh, client so that we can connect in. Then I have, well, I have this function. So coll uh, configuration collection with, sorry, configure collection with retry. So here's the thing. Um, there's probably different ways to do this, but when the collection gets stood up and then in a CloudFormation template, it then calls the custom resource to go and set up the indexes. Um, it might well be that it's not quite ready. And so you get a failure and says, you have to stop. So what this does is it basically tries, waits 10 seconds, tries again, waits another 10 seconds and tries again. I can refine this when I can see how often it usually takes. Um, but anyway, that's what I've got. Um, and it does have a maximum number of tries. It's not gonna keep trying forever. Um, which is super important, especially when it comes to CloudFormation templates. We've all sat there just waiting for this thing to stop. Um, anyway, so that's going to connect eventually, and it does collect, connect. Um, and then I can run this, which is the configuration script. So this is going to go in and set the index. And if we remember and we look back at the index setup that we saw when we did get underscore all inside of the collection, you'll recognize some of this stuff. Indeed, down here, this gets more um, specific. This is the mappings. Now, I've just taken exactly what the Bedrock console page does, and I've just replicated that into here because I know it works. Um, obviously, you could do something different. You can name these things different. Things like this um, Amazon Bedrock metadata and Amazon Bedrock text chunk um, are property names which you do have to specify and I'm just using whatever it used before because I saw no need to change it. Um, but if I run all of that, then I will end up with an open search collection which is set up with the correct indexes and we are then just a few short steps away um, from finishing my ultimate goal. So we then need to go and um, configure the data source. So S3 in that particular case, before we need to do that, you can do that with the, uh, you can do that with Bodo 3. Um, and so presumably you could do it in CloudFormation as well, maybe, but you can do it in Bodo 3. And I do it there because I also want to copy a bunch of files into the S3 bucket. I then want to kick off the ingestion process and all that kind of stuff. It, it can all be done. So you can get to the point where you can write one script and that, um, that one script will then deploy an entire thing for it. The open search collection, the index, the knowledge base, the configuration for the knowledge base and the data source and actually kick off ingestion and then sit there saying, woohoo, I'm done. So that's what I'm working on. Let me know what you're working on. Um, and uh, yeah, until the next time, I will see you later.